What's going on YouTube? Lehman Griffin here with part number two of our Fortis Airframes Multirotormania.com tricopter build. As you can see in the background here, we have got the frame completely built. I went ahead and tossed my GoPro camera on there just because. Uh, this video series um, is going to be a lot of videos. This particular part in the series is going to be focused on a review of the Fortis Airframes Titan tricopter. Um, going to go over how, how it built, how long it took to build it, how well the components were, um, how well the pieces fit together, just an overall feel for what I think about the frame. Uh, we can jump right in if you want. I guess the first thing we'll talk about is um, how it came to me. came to me, everything was taped up, all the plastic pieces, everything was really nicely packaged so that it wouldn't scratch. When I got it, the only thing I could complain about was Taking the tape off was kind of a pain. Um, it took a long time, but you know that's kind of it's one of those trade-offs. If you want a good finished product, you've got to protect it somehow. So tape is the best way. And when they're laser cutting, uh, when they're cutting it with the laser, uh, the tape protects anything from getting burnt, any of the edges or anything. So overall, it came to me in really good condition. Um, brand new, had no defects no uh, marring, no bent pieces, no holes that weren't drilled out. Um, so yeah, it came in really good condition, went together like a snap. It took a little long to put it together, but I did it. I was taking my time. I'd never assembled one of these before, so I was really paying attention to the instructions, which by the way are really nice. They give you CAD drawings for each component or each assembly, should I say. So like the isolated camera mount on the bottom, they give you a complete CAD drawing for how that goes together. The yaw control in the back with the servo they give you a drawing for that every individual component they give you a drawing for so that you can see how it's supposed to go together uh, another thing i liked about it they gave you extra screws which is not a big thing as long as all the screws work but sometimes that doesn't happen and not only that but later down the road if something breaks or snaps it's nice to be able to have an extra screw uh, and they gave me good a good bit of extra screws so everything that had a screw they gave me at least one to two extras for each type of screw so came together really well um, the yaw mechanism was a little bit tricky to put together see if you can see that there it's actually a servo I'll put it right here so you can see it it's actually a servo that controls the rotation you see the little shaft in there of the rear propeller see the servo turns and it actuates the rear servo and that's what actually gives you your turning in a tricopter whereas a quadcopter uses the speed of the rear blades and whatnot a bunch of functions that make it do it but a tricopter it has a servo servo tilts this way it goes this way servo tilts that way it goes that way simple enough so that was pretty tricky to put together and it's really only tricky because of the bushings in here. You can see this pin, um, it slides through and it's um, what they call an interference mount on the inside bushing. So what you have to do, it, it's gonna, you're, at first you're gonna think that the hole's too small, but really what you have to do is take a hammer or a vise or something, set it on a table and tap it into the hole and it'll eventually go in for both of the inside mounts and the outside mounts will just slide onto the end and screw to the plate. And then what you'll do on the other end, let's see if I can show you guys, you'll take your screw, let's see here, there we go. You'll take your screw here, the servo arm actually screws into your fourth mount on your motor mount. So that way when it rotates, you can see the servo arm actually is what rotates it. So that was pretty clever, uh, very well thought out, well engineered, how that works. Um, the landing feet are pretty nice. They just snap together here and everything is built with zip ties. So everything that can break off of this uh, tricopter frame is zip tied on. The motor mounts are zip tied on. The um, landing feet, the GPS antenna here you can see, that's two pieces there, that's zip tied on. The top posts are screwed on. The tricopter wings actually, or the, the booms, I guess you could call them, they utilize a, an O-ring here. And it's pretty cool, it's a breakaway design. Let's see if I can do it for you. What happens when you start to bend it, 
snaps the o-ring off. See there, the o-ring popped off. But there's a little retainer in the back side here. Let me spin around so you can see it. There's a retainer in the back side. See it right there, how it's grooved and it's a small notch that keeps the o-ring from falling off. And whenever you want to put it back on, you bend your prop up to or your boom up to the right angle. Snap your o-ring back in. Pull it across here. And feed it back in just like that. Bam, there you go. Your o-rings are back in place and your booms are the right orientation. So that allows it to be breakaway in the event of a crash. Your boom will actually, it'll, it'll, it won't bend, it'll fold. Uh, in worst case scenario, usually you'll break this o-ring, which they gave me extra o-rings. They gave me three extra o-rings. And this is all normal stuff that comes with the kit. They didn't just give them to me. So everything that I got, you should get in your kit if you purchase one. Uh, on the front here, you can see we've got the GoPro. We've also got a board camera mount. Now this is a camera that a lot of FPV setups use. It looks like a circuit board and it's got a lens on it. And then you'll wire that into your uh, either your OSD board or your, um, and then it'll go to your transmitter, which goes out to your receiver for FPV. So the way I mounted that, and uh, notice the isolation here, they give you isolation mounts for your camera board so it doesn't vibrate and you don't get that nasty wobble that comes with mounting a camera on uh, something that's rotating like that. So, GoPro up here, FPV camera down here. I'll show you how I mounted them. You'll notice they're at angles. There you go, that's better. You'll notice they're at angles, but the FPV camera is aiming, aiming up and the GoPro camera is aiming down. And the reason I did that, um, there's a mount that they give you right here with this orange pad on it. And that mount can be reversed, or those pins, those little bushings, the, the plates that hold, mount it can be reversed so you can aim the GoPro up. Or you can mount it down to sandwich it flat. Uh, I did the GoPro down so that when I'm hovering steady, I can have the GoPro aimed sort of at the ground to get that ground shot. I've got the FPV camera actually aiming up, and I do that because when you're flying FPV, most of the time you're going forward. Well, when you're going forward, your cam or your tricopter is going to be tilted like this. And if you've got the camera mounted down, you're actually going to be looking almost at the ground, and you won't really be able to see what's out in front of you. So with the FPV camera angled up, when you're flat, it'll, it'll be pointing up a little bit. But when you're moving forward, it'll almost be parallel to the ground. So you'll be able to see a track in front of you instead of looking at the ground while you're moving forward. So that's, that's strictly for FPV use. That's why I did that. Otherwise, I would, if I was using a board camera just for, um, if I was using it for FPV flying, but I wasn't going to be doing any fast racing or, or you know, forward movement very fast, I wouldn't have to do that. I could just mount it aiming down and I would just, um, I would not go forward at such a rapid pace that it would tilt far enough to where I couldn't see what was in front of me. So that's pretty cool there. And again, it's all machine cut Delrin or laser cut Delrin. You can see the finish on this thing is really nice. All the pieces fit together really well. They give you strap, uh, strap holes here for your battery mounts. You can mount a battery underneath it. This is also an optional piece. You can take this off, and let's see if you can see up in there. There you go. If you take it off, you actually have mounts on your main frame for a battery strap as well. So, pretty cool frame. I like it a lot. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. I can't wait to get this thing building more. Uh, the next step is actually gonna be installing some of the electrical components. Uh, I've already got the motors mounted and the props, and I did that because in order to mount the motor plates, you have to go ahead and screw the motors to them before you zip time to the frame. So I went ahead and put those on. Overall, really good kit. I like it, good quality, uh, great customer service. These guys have been back and forth with me a lot talking about this, giving me any help I need, any questions about how to assemble it, shoot them an email, call them, uh, send them a message on their website, and these guys get back to you really quick and they'll answer any of your questions that you have. So definitely highly recommended, um, not only just for quality, but you know, customer service is most of it. So if, if the part is good, it's irrelevant if you can't get any help or any, any service or anything like that from the company itself. So part is only 50% of it. You got to have the good customer service. And these guys at Fortis definitely have the customer service game. Check that out there. Going to be putting some, uh, I went with a red Titan cover. They actually sent me, let's see if I've got it here. Oh, uh, here it is. They actually sent me a blue one and a clear one. So I'm not sure which one I'm gonna run. Guys, post in the comments below and let me know which one you think I should run. 
Uh, I was gonna do a red, and, I'm gonna do a red and black theme on this, but I think it would be cool uh, to integrate some blue. And what I wanna do, I wanna drill out this and mount an LED into the side of this plate. And that way the edges will glow red. So there you have it, Fortis Airframes Tricopter. It's the Titan kit. You can get on their website, fortisairframes.com. Check them out, pretty good stuff. Can't wait to fly this thing. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna be tackling electronics, putting the speed controllers on this thing, wiring it up, power distribution board. Um, what else we got? Power distribution board. I'm gonna go ahead and put the flight board on here. I'm gonna talk about the Dragonfly 32 flight controller that I got from multirotormania.com. And uh, we're gonna get this thing up in the air. So we'll see you guys next episode. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my video, go on Facebook, check out our, uh, our fan page. It's facebook.com slash RC Scale Adventures. Facebook.com slash RC Scale Adventures. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one. Oh, 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 oh,